You see me all right? Fantastic. All right, let's see about the screen share. Can't tell I'm here in mission control. <laughs> So, get started here, I guess. I grab the time. 203. All right, I'm doing this. Um, so, hi, my name is Aaron Felity. I am owner of Arrow One Solutions, a small Drupal consultancy near Chicago. I have mm, uh, something like 11 or 12 years' experience working with Drupal, and I Fell in love with this application called Lando back before it was called Lando. It had another name, and um, I've been following along with the development for years now, and uh, I just really like it, and I like sharing about it and talking about it. Um, and so that's what I'm here to do today. Uh, this is a little different from my previous uh, Lando talks where I've talked about you know, just what Lando is, basically an introduction to it and what it can do. This is more of, a, you know, some some of the more complicated things you can do and some configurations that you can make work to, to do some more complex things. Um, and I apologize for um, any uh, long config files that are up on my slides here. i got to slip in the puns. Oh, wrong button. I'm going to blow up this rocket. I don't even know how to steer it. Here we go. There. <laughs> so, what is Lando? It is a free open source local development and DevOps tool. Um, it, it, at its simplest level, it allows you to mimic your production environment locally. Um, so whatever, whatever services you're running in production, uh, Lando lets you do that on your local machine easily. Um, standardize your team's dev environments across platforms, whether you're Linux, uh, Windows, Mac, all the same. It uses Docker in the background um, to, to basically generate the same environment for everyone, regardless of what platform you're using. Um, it's got built-in integration with hosting providers. Uh, the one it's had for quite some time now is Pantheon. Uh, they give you functions to interact directly with their service. Uh, after that, you get, um, or, or coming soon, um, uh, platform.sh and amazie.io have teamed up with Lando and they're going to have uh, built-in integrations as well. Uh, so look out for those in the new, near future. Uh, Lando lets you customize or extend tooling or deployment options. Um, you can essentially define commands or a series of commands. So you've got something that, you know, it's a long command that has to do with you know, maybe uh, running some tests or, or, or linting or something, and, you know, several flags you have to have in there. But you can simplify that into one single command where you can type, you know, Lando lint, and it'll, it'll run that whole thing. Or you can have a series of commands, and it um, will put them all together, you know, almost like a script, uh, and it executes with, with one command in your, in your console. Um, Lando lets you run CI tests locally. Uh, and run local tests in CI. So if you've got you know your your PHP unit tests you want to run, um, you can you can make Lando tooling that executes those. The environment's all built out. It'll it'll execute those tests. Uh, and you can watch it all happen. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is that you can also run local tests in CI. So that same test that I just described that you would run a Lando command, um, you can actually put that out on the cloud. Um, in, in something like Circle CI, for example, 
you can actually have their platform install Lando and build out your pre-configured environment as you've already defined it in Lando. No need to have another configuration with another uh, environment that tries to be like your environment. You just, uh, just use the one you already have and have been using. Uh, use Lando in the cloud to run run your tests. So you put a little script in there and say, okay, install Lando, install, um, all right, or then just do Lando test or whatever your, your tooling is to make that work. It also allows you to use a single development, a local development environment for all of your projects. So some of the, the others in the past, uh, it's been difficult to switch from one project to another uh, within one tool. Um, Lando bases you know, each, each environment uh, based on the directory you're in. So if you switch directories to another project you're working on and you fire up Lando, well, it's going to spin up your whole environment for that project. Um, there's no, there's no like, switching back and forth, nothing you have to do for that. So uh, getting into some of the things, uh, some of the tips and tricks I want to talk about here. Um, one of the big things with Lando uh, or, or any, any environment really, um, if you're using Xdebug, um, well, the benefits of Xdebug, you, you, you might want to use Xdebug if you're you know, writing code, debugging code, because um, you can step through your, your uh, code and see what it's doing while it's executing right in your IDE. Uh, you get real-time values for your variables, so you can see, you know, what what is actually being loaded, what is actually, you know, uh, being passed from from one uh, function to the next. Um, gives you stack traces, so you can see how you got to a certain place that maybe caused an error. So it's a great tool uh, for debugging. Um, and Lando gives you the option to turn that on. It's a single line you add in your your Lando config file. Uh, X debug true. And now Lando, when it builds your environment, will do all the necessary things to make, make sure uh, xdebug is running for you, and you have essentially zero config on, on the Lando side. Um, the downside to running xdebug uh, is that there's lots of overhead involved. It's, it's constantly um, recording backtrace information, keeping track of all the values of all of your um, variables and such, and it's it's making that all available to you, uh, and that that takes a lot of time and processing power. And if if you're running Xdebug, you've probably seen that it is it, Drupal, for example, uh, runs terribly slowly. Uh, it's you know sometimes to the point of being unusable. You, you know if you run a cache clear, your, your site might just time out after ten minutes. Um, so, okay, and that's the case. Maybe you want to switch off um, Xdebug because it's slowing things down. Well, the problem is with Lando, uh, that is part of the build process that turns it on and off. And if you've ever run a Lando rebuild, uh, you get, um, it, it takes time. You just got to re, re downloads all your, your containers and, and just builds out the whole system over again. And just to switch on Xdebug or switch it off, it may or may not be worth the time saving you get, especially if you want to be able to switch back and forth uh, quickly and easily. So I'm going to show you uh, an example here of a way to bypass all that, that headache. Um, so, and don't worry about uh, taking notes on all this. I have a repo I'll show you at the end that has most of this stuff in there, and I'll be continuing to add the missing things. Um, so you can, you can go back and reference these snippets. Uh, but the top of your Lando config file here, um, this example, I've, uh, I'm using a Drupal 9 recipe, um, which it has now, if you hadn't noticed, um, which builds out the, the, the standard you know, stack you need to run Drupal 9, uh, best practices for configuration and whatnot. Um, this, is, this is pretty standard. Now, down in your tooling section, actually, let me... And back up here. One thing you'll you'll notice here um, under that config line is where you might have put xdebug true to turn on xdebug. Um, 
don't put that there. If you're currently using it, get rid of it because you don't need it. Um, you could put xdebug false there if you want to, you know, show that you are deliberately having it false. But the default, if you do nothing, is that xdebug will not be configured. So then down in our tooling section of our Lando YAML, um, I've created a command called xdebug on. It's uh, running in the app server service, which is the default um, PHP Apache service uh, for the Drupal recipes or any of the PHP recipes, I believe. Um, and its purpose is to enable xdebug. So we're saying, okay, we're going to run as user root. So you can actually execute commands as root by having that line in there. And the command we're going to run, or two commands, uh, well, one that matters, um, is the command for Docker to uh, enable xdebug. That's a built-in function, function that, that Docker gives us. Uh, so we just run it. Um, and now xdebug is on, in a sense, at least configured. But now you need to uh, restart the services that would be running that xdebug uh, plugin. Um, in this example, I'm running two commands because some people run, by default, uh, most of these recipes run Apache, but some like to run Nginx. And if you're running Nginx, um, you need to restart the PHP FPM service. So what this does here, uh, you know, it, ent it enables xdebug, and then the and and there uh, says, OK, if that's successful, run the next command, which is uh, our pkill command, which is going to uh, end up restarting the PHP FPM service uh, so that that updated config gets loaded. Um, if you're not running Nginx, you're running Apache, which is the default, um, this will fail. So those those two pipes there, are, are, they're an or. Uh, that'll pass it over to the next command, which tells Apache to reload. So this is a one-line command that could work either if you're running Nginx or Apache. Um, I know there's code out there in issues where they give you one option or the other you have to pick. Uh, this will do either or, so you can drop it into any of your projects. Uh, and then that second command there is just some uh, stuff to make the xdebug on uh, notification colorful. So yeah, it'll turn it on and it'll give you a green, green lettering that says xdebug on. And much like the on, the off is set up in a similar way. Um, the, the, rather than a command that sets up the config, uh, all we have to do is delete the, uh, config file, uh, that tells uh, Apache or whatever to actually, you know, load and start xdebug. So delete that config file and then restart whichever service is necessary. Um, it'll be loaded and then we'll get a, in this one, a red xdebug off uh, indication. So super useful. It's actually pretty quick. I, yep, got animation. This is real speed here. Uh, much faster than rebuilding and doing a Lando rebuild each and every time. Just like that. We turned xdebug on. It would work perfectly fine with our IDE, and then we turned it right back off, and we're done. Now we can go back to having fast page loads and such. Now, um, we're going to talk about setting up Lando for a uh, decoupled environment. Now, uh, it's a very popular topic at these sorts of events, so I'm sure most of you have heard of you know this, this concept, but uh, briefly, it is uh, the idea that you have a separation of concerns between your back end, your data management, and the front end, what the user actually sees. Um, you know, the standard Drupal methodology has always been you, Drupal handles the back end and generates the front end. Well, there's a lot of cool, fun, modern uh, uh, UI things you can do that Drupal isn't the right tool for. Um, but if you want to have the benefits of Drupal for content entry and data management and, you know, things like that, um, you can use Drupal for that. And then you can use a different thing like Gatsby or React or any of the other front-end platforms to actually pull the data from, from Drupal. Um, so you end up with two different uh, services running at the same time, right? You have, in, in the example I'm going to show, I'm going to be using Gatsby. 
So I'll say you have a Gatsby uh, environment, which runs in Node and um, has, you know, JavaScript, JavaScript tooling and, and things like that. And then you have uh, uh, Drupal, which is running on PHP and Apache. Um, and so now you need to create this environment in Lando. Um, Lando allows you to have multiple services running at a time. You don't have to just have the app server that comes with the Drupal recipe. You can also create an additional server or service that runs Node that can handle all the Gatsby stuff. Um, and it comes preloaded with all the best practice tooling for developing in that Node environment. Um, and you can just add that into your, you can actually add that into your existing Drupal environment and have that available. Um, Lando also allows you to do some targeted tooling. So you can, um, in your tooling commands, you can, rather than just say, okay, um, execute, you know, this rush script, you know, in, uh, against my app server, you can say also, I want to run this, this node, uh, script as well within the same tooling, um, and target the node.js service. Um, and then Lando is smart enough to know what you're trying to do and handles all the networking and interconnectivity for these things. So you can actually, when your Gatsby or whatever front end service is running its build, it needs to query Drupal for the data. It can just hit it via a URL and the data is all there. So in our example, example, uh, Lando YAML file, we have um, a basic Drupal 8 recipe and our standard config. Um, in this particular example, I have Drupal installed in a Drupal directory in my project root. Um, I also have a Gatsby directory that has all the, the Gatsby stuff. Um, so I point my web root into the Drupal directory at Drupal's web directory. Um, in this example, I needed PHP 7.3 and MariaDB 10.2 to match um, what is being hosted on, uh, in this project, it's platform.sh. And uh, that's the environment they gave us there, so we're matching it here. In our services section, uh, we have the app server, which was defined and built uh, by the Drupal 8 recipe. Um, we're making some additions to it here by adding some build steps. And our first build step there is, um, well, our first three build steps really are installing platform.sh's um, CLI tool so that we can execute the uh, execute commands against the server from within our Lando environment. So, you know, if you have this in your Lando config and you, you know, you give your Lando config to a coworker, uh, or you, you move to a different machine or you're, you know, you're starting fresh. Um, you don't need to load platforms CLI tool on your local machine. It just comes built into to this Lando environment. And I also have a build step that goes into the Drupal directory and it runs uh, composer. Uh, I always like to add this composer process timeout uh, variable in front of composer install. Uh, because you know, if Lando's running slow or, or your computer's running slow or, or whatever, you got a, a long, uh, big file. Drupal, for example, is a big enough one that it likes to time out. Uh, so right here in the command, it says, okay, give it 600 uh, seconds to run. I think the default is 300, so you double the available time. But this runs when you first fire up uh, Lando for the first time for this environment. Or if you run a Rand Lando rebuild, and it, it rebuilds them from there. Also in this app server section, um, we have an override section that overrides some of the, gives you the ability to override some of the default configurations that Lando would put in these uh, services. So the app server has environment variables uh, pre-set up by Lando. If you go into the, if you guys, uh, Lando SSH into your app server, uh, you can do a print end, and, and it, there's a whole bunch related to the environment in there uh, that Lando put in there. Uh, but we're going to override, we're going to add some of our own environment variables as well. Um, in this case, it, I've got a project ID for platform.sh that allows their CLI tool to, to know, you know which, which project I'm trying to access remotely on, on their systems. Um, 
Drush Options URI, that is used by Drush. So when you do like a Drush user login, um, the you'll get the HTTPS colon slash slash default as the URL. Um, if you have this environment variable, it tells Drush to use that instead of the word default. Uh, so that's helpful if you want to actually be able to copy and paste or click the links that are, are generated uh, by Drush. Now, in this uh, example, I'm also going to touch slightly briefly on Drupal test traits, um, which allows you to run uh, PHP unit tests against your uh, active database. So instead of, you know, the, the typical way of doing things is it spins up your site, it starts generating content and generating users and runs tests against those. Uh, this Drupal test traits um, gives you the ability to use your actual like production database or whatever database you feed in um, and test against that. Against that. So you can run tests against your actual content and your actual users. Now, outside of the app server uh, service, we add a new service. Um, this one, we're going to define it entirely because it, it does not come preset with that Drupal recipe. Um, so we're titling this one Node.js, and it is of type Node 10. So it's going to be running Node version 10, and Lando knows what that means. It's going to pull in its own uh, uh, Docker container, uh, and it's going to be running Node 10. Um, this scanner false line, uh, in some instances, when you don't want Lando to check for an active URL, if, you know, if you've noticed uh, when you start Lando, it, it waits for a minute for all of your services to run, and then it shows you all the URLs you can use to access uh, your website. The Gatsby uh, uh, system we're going to be running in this service doesn't by default start up any, anything that hosts anything. So there is no URL. Uh, so that scanner false tells Lando, hey, don't keep trying to scan looking looking in this container for something live. There, there, there isn't. Um, if you don't have that there, it, it, it waits and waits and waits and waits and times out eventually. Um, and we've added overrides. So the default uh, image that comes in uh, has ports set to port 80 and uh, what we're doing is we're adding an additional forwarding port here. We're saying, okay, port 8000, which is uh, what Gatsby's development tools use, uh, should be forwarded out of the container to port 8000. So now you can go to localhost 8000 on your desktop or laptop, and it will actually tunnel in and go to this Node.js container service um, directly. And Lando handles you know, routing that together, so you can actually uh, tie that in with... Uh, Actual URL, you can have a, a lando.site URL and that'll tie it together for you. And again, we're doing environment variables. We're adding some, uh, we've got Drupal host. Uh, this is for uh, uh, Gatsby's configuration to know where to look to get the data. And uh, Lando gives us, well, actually I define later, I'll show you, I, I define this, uh, swcms.lando.site URL to point to Drupal. Uh, and here I'm passing it into the node container as an environment variable. So when Gatsby needs to access the Drupal data, it, it can just look for the value of that environment variable. And then there's some other environment variables that Gatsby uh, gives you to do some configuration. You can tell it what, uh, what path to use as it generates URLs and uh, the refresh endpoint here uh, is something that allows allows you to send uh, send requests to Gatsby to tell it to check for new data on the Drupal side again. Um, that's an option you can turn on for Gatsby. That's actually fairly new, I believe. Um, if you've worked with Gatsby in the past, the you would know that if you've changed your data, you probably have to restart the Gatsby development server. Um, we're having that refresh endpoint enabled. There's a way to now refresh without um, restarting the whole server. So also under this Node.js, we have Globals. Globals is built into um, Lando's Node-based services. Um, 
and all it does is essentially tells um, Node uh, NPM to install whatever package globally. So I wanted the Gatsby CLI and Yarn to be installed and be available globally within the Node.js container. And that does that, and it's, they're saying to just get the latest version. Um, I'm building as root. So Lando, you can build. You have your build steps, like I, I mentioned earlier. They run when the, the environment is building. Uh, one of your options is build as root. So normally when you're building, you're building as, as the, the standard user that's defined by the, the service. Um, build as root uh, does what it sounds like. It lets you do things as the root user. So if you needed to install new software, uh, you know, new packages that needed to run globally, you'd want them in this step. Um, but what we're doing uh, here is I'm just erasing the node user's password because by default, the container sets a password and there's no way to know what it is. Um, and I want to be able to execute tooling as the node user later on in my file. So I cleared out the, the password for that. It's not really a security risk because you're just running this locally on your own machine. I, I definitely wouldn't do this on anything production. But yeah, just so the tooling can function properly as the right user. I cleared the password so I can switch users later. Um, then our build steps, uh, we're just running yarn install, which is the similar to composer uh, yarn, is, and it installs all the dependencies for Gatsby. My time. 15 minutes left, all right. So also in my services, we're defining a Chrome service. Now this demonstrates that you can use uh, Docker containers that are out there in the wild that have nothing to do with Lando and embed them into your system, uh, into your environment. Um, we say, okay, my service is called Chrome. Uh, it's of type compose, so it's using the Docker compose uh, uh, functionality. Um, we're defining its services, um, saying that, okay, the image is this uh, Justin R R Ribeiro uh, Chrome headless. That's, you know, that's on his GitHub and, you know, it's a container that's out there you can get for Docker. Um, then use a stable version of that image. Uh, so Lando will just go and get that image and pull it in. And then um, with Docker, you kind of have to explain to it what what it's doing with that container. Um, so you know what command it runs when you when you essentially start up that container. And so we put in here, um, we're telling there's a Google, Google Chrome uh, binary inside this container. Um, we're just saying, hey, Google Chrome, fire up in headless mode. Uh, so no GUI at all. Uh, and, you know, here's some, some uh, config, you know, which port we need to hit and such. And then uh, all that at the end is basically don't, don't do any output um, to, the, uh, to the terminal. Just, just run in the background. So Lando fires this up, Google Home, Google Chrome fires up in headless mode, all ready to go. It's accessible on port uh, 9222. Um, and the username is Chrome because that's what this particular uh, container was pre-configured with. So we tell Lando, if you access anything here, use user Chrome. And then down further, we have our tooling section. Um, we put some pass-through services here, or pass-through tooling. Uh, we just simply say npm node yarn Gatsby. Uh, we're just pointing those at the service Node.js that we defined earlier. Um, if I type Lando npm or Lando yarn or Lando Gatsby, just forward that directly into that service. Uh, don't do anything else. Um, so that's what those you know, fairly simple tooling definitions are doing, just, just forwarding the command in. Um, then what I've done here, I've also have, I have Drush. Uh, since I have, uh, it's possible that I'll be working within the Gatsby directory or within the Drupal directory, 
Um, and I may want to be able to run drush commands regardless of where I'm at. Um, I've added a uh, argument here to the drush command uh, that says, you know, go to slash app slash Drupal slash web and then run, you know, that drush command. So no matter where I'm at uh, inside this project, if I type the word drush, it'll run inside the Drupal web directory. more advanced tooling here um now we say this one's this one's running inside the node.js service um where gatsby is run, meant to be run um and we want to start gatsby's development server well typically i'd have to type all of that to start the uh server within a, a dockerized environment um but i made it simple now i just type lando develop and it runs all that for me in the right container um, and fires up Gatsby's development server. I also did a Gatsby build command. Uh, this runs within the Node.js container. So I run Lando build. It knows to go into the Node container. It um, runs uh, Gatsby's build command. Uh, which builds all of your your static HTML and queries Drupal and gets all the data. So when you want to build your your actual deployable site, you can just run build and it'll generate everything for you. Test now Lando test. If you were to type that in, runs on our app server. Uh, it's running the PHP unit tests, and it actually. Uh, I don't have it pictured here, but it's using the PHP unit.xml file to configure PHP unit and to tell it where to run its tests. Um, and in that file, I've defined uh, that, that the, the path to that Chrome service that we, we defined earlier. Uh, so simply running Lando test um, fires a PHP unit. PHP unit knows now because of that config to look at that Chrome service and access it on the ports that we defined. Um, and actually the Chrome browser will, will start actually clicking on buttons on the page as if it's rendered. That is pretty neat. And another tooling I use here, since we're using uh, platform.sh and our uh, database could be hosted up there. Uh, occasionally you want to be able to pull down the latest database. I created this DBDL, D, uh, database download uh, tooling. So you type Lando DBDL, and it tells the app server, pull down. Um, it actually tells it, execute uh, the platform CLI uh, binary and tell it to run its DB dump command and then its various flags uh, that tells it where to put the uh, resulting SQL file, which in this case will be the root of the um, project. So one command, uh, as long as you have your SSH key set up on your local machine, uh, you can just download the latest copy of the database. And this kind of thing could work. Uh, any, you know, you can define your, your commands and whatnot. Anything as a CLI tool, uh, any other platform. And as I mentioned, platform.sh is going to be one of the built-in uh, uh, hosting providers soon to Lando. So it's possible that this command will become obsolete once that happens, but for now. It's useful. And then that last line there is just echoing that it, it downloaded the database and telling you to run a DB reset, uh, which is another tooling I defined that tells uh, Lando to go into its database server where it's running the MariaDB um, and then run this particular script that looks for uh, potentially zipped or uh, GZ files for the database um, and then you know look for it and then dump it into the script and the script actually will it's Lando's built-in um, DB import script uh, it's actually stored within the container in helpers SQL dash import sh it's the same script uh, so we're just calling that telling it to run within the database server and then in the app server over and over again we're running a bunch of brush commands your typical ones that you might do when importing a database uh, clearing the caches, uh, running updates, importing config, 
And the last one I always like to do is do a user login just so it dumps the uh, uh, URL to get logged in right after you reset because after you re-import your database, you're going to have been logged out of your session. Quick access to get right back in. So now I want to talk about Drupal as an app. Another cool thing you can do with Lando um, is have a local only installation of Drupal that never exists on the web. So generally the idea is I've got this website out on the internet and I also want to work on it locally. Well, you pull things down into Lando and you can do that. But what if you only want to work on something locally? Well, that's a thing you can do. A lot of people like to do tests and things, uh, but it's also useful as a publishing tool. You can use Drupal locally and then publish the resulting um, the resulting web pages that you've created uh, as static HTML files using the Tome module. Now the Tome module turns Drupal into a static site generator. So whatever would be typically output as your theme, uh, all the content filled out, Tome turns all that into HTML, dumps out all the image files, JS files, CSS files that your theme wouldn't have generated. It's just a static HTML website that you can then just FTP to wherever you want, and it's there. Um, this is good because if you have a simple site that doesn't really need much interactivity, but you like the, the ability to go into Drupal and, and control you know, all the things that you can control with Drupal, um, but you don't want the risk of having a, an active application running out on the internet where it could be hacked and you have to maintain it. Um, this can just exist on your local machine and you can use Lando, turn it on, generate your pages, turn it off, upload your HTML, and you're, you don't have to worry about basically any of the security aspect of Drupal. Um, yeah, so Tome also gives you the ability to um, store your content statically. Um, so rather than using a database, it actually generates JSON files. Uh, this is good if you want to keep everything backed up on somewhere like GitHub uh, and you uh, want the ability to just pull it down whenever. Um, so you get all these JSON files and your whole code base for Drupal that lives on GitHub. It doesn't actually run. It's just stored as you know, the files on GitHub. You pull it down. Um, you fire up Lando. Lando can then import using Tome's uh, capability to read those JSON files that it generated. It essentially uh, re-imports all your data uh, so that you don't have to have a consistent database running anywhere. It's all just flat files. Tome also gives you the ability to publish um, fairly easily. It's got uh, some uh, uh, additional plugins, uh, additional modules. Um, to allow you to, to deploy right to, to GitHub pages or Netlify. Uh, I believe there's some others, uh, all with Drush commands. So, you know, you enter your content, you hit your Drush command, and it just deploys your, your static files to wherever you want them. And how this works in Lando. So we've got our Lando config here. Uh, Tome runs in Drupal. So we're running Drupal, the Drupal 8 recipe. Uh, in this case, actually, yeah, the... I have a Drupal directory, which has all of my Drupal installed in it. Uh, so I point the web root there, Orlando. In my services, I define my app server, my build um, steps. Uh, what I'm telling it to do is uh, run composer install to get all the dependencies for this. Um, so you know, the first time you fire up Lando, it's gonna build out everything that Drupal needs to run. Um, and also install all of your modules because those are all defined in uh, your composer uh, JSON. Or, uh, yeah. um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, the Drush Options URI, uh, I put the URL in there. So rather than getting that default, we get the actual um, URL to use in the output from Drush. So you hit Lando start and it does its thing. Um, 
first pulls in everything it needs. Um, first thing it did was, you know, uh, pulling the containers. They already cached, so that went quick. Um, and then now it's running the composer install, uh, where it's going to pull in all of your dependencies, all of your, your modules. Um, you know, this came this came right after you know if if you had this stored on your GitHub and then you know wiped out your computer, got a new one, whatever. You just you know get pull pull everything in, run Lando start, and it starts building your whole application uh, right away. And so once this finishes up, uh, I have a build step in there that tells um, Tome to import all of the. Uh, JSON files into its database, and so that's what it did there. And now you have a fully functional uh, environment. The sample tome lando.site is the URL. Uh, it's going to take you there. All of your content has just been imported automatically from those static files. All your usernames uh, or uh, user accounts, all that stuff is in there. Um, you spin up Drupal at that that URL that you were just given. It's you know your standard Drupal experience. You get you get to enter your content. Uh, once you save it, Tome automatically starts, it immediately generates those JSON files, uh, and updates any that, you know, if you've made changes to a node, it updates the right JSON with all the data that's contained in that node. And then when you, in our Lando file, I had uh, a build tooling command here. Uh, so when you type Lando build, it goes into the app server and into the Drupal directory and tells tells uh, Drush to run the Tome static command that comes with the Tome module. And what that does is it generates the uh, static HTML files that you can then upload. Uh, and when it's done, you end up with a an HTML directory that uh, appears in your project. Um, and in there is flat HTML. So you have, uh, you know, your index HTML would be your, your uh, Drupal front page. Uh, the node directory uh, would be, you know, node inside node, there's a directory called one with an index HTML. Well, that's the same as node one uh, in Drupal, and it's just a flat HTML file. Uh, and then, you know, if you have aliases or whatever, it'll just fill these in as um, uh, folders. And, you know, the behavior will be the same when you look at these in the browser. Uh, this is another tooling. This is just for if um, you have more than one person working with this. You have each person using their own separate Drupal, uh, and you can actually merge in content changes uh, by merging the JSON files in, in, in like GitHub or wherever. Um, so again, you know, you have someone slightly tech savvy, a few te slightly tech savvy people. You don't need Drupal running on a server anywhere. You can spin it up and make their changes and shut it down. Merge. Merge content. Um, so anyway, you run Lando uh, install here, and it does the same thing. It gets the latest dependencies in case any any uh, you know updates were applied by someone or whatnot, and then it runs uh, the Tome, the Drush Tome install, uh, and pulls in all the data again. And so it gets you up to speed with whatever's changed since the last time you were in there. Now, one of the cool things you can do with this, um, if you're not familiar with Netlify, it's sort of a CI build tool slash hosting. Um, it's pretty popular amongst the, the front end uh, development world. The idea is that they, they watch your GitHub or uh, GitLab or whatever, and if you deploy something new to GitHub, um, they just automatically start hosting it. Um, if you have build steps that you can define, if you need to, I don't know, uh, uh, minify some uh, CSS files or something on the fly, you can add add stuff in that uh, that, that they'll do for you. Uh, but in its simplest uh, uh, form here, you point it at uh, the directory where your your HTML HTML lives, and whenever you go, you know, Lando build and it builds your HTML, uh, and then you commit those new files. Uh, Netlify will pick that up and immediately begin hosting it uh, on your website. So there's no manual like uploading or anything. Just get push and it's, it's online. As static files that you don't have to you know manage or, or keep updated or work with in any way. Uh, 
and I'm about out of time. So, um, uh, so yeah, this is what I was talking about. You just get pushed to uh, deploy. Um, and this is if you want to see examples of some of these, you just uh, go to the GitHub Aaron Felity Lando examples. Um, and it has most of what I've talked about here. Um, anything that's missing, I am planning to add. So that will appear there if you want to follow along. Um, there's the, the link to that. Um, yeah, I wanted to get into GitHub Actions some, but I am out of time. I'll just briefly talk about it. The GitHub Actions are uh, GitHub's built in CI, and you can set that up to where it installs Lando. Lando has a tool called, um, let me pull my face back. Uh, Lando has a tool called, um, uh, ah, I'm drawing a blank right now. Either way, Lando has a script and you go to the Lando GitHub, um, you know, if you go to GitHub slash Lando slash Lando, you get the actual Lando project, Lando code. There's also Lando slash, um, ah, launch something. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and it is a script that its purpose is to install Docker, install Lando, and then you can just run your same environment as a like a build step in the cloud as part of your CI um, so that you don't, like as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to redefine your, um, your environment again in another service. You just have it use the one you've already defined and have been using in Lando, and it'll just work there. Um, with that... I will see if I spot any questions here. Thanks for thanks for posting the link there. I'm just gonna go in reverse here. So if anybody wants to repost their questions, probably more likely I'll see them. <laughs> um what would the benefits be for running Gatsby within Lando as opposed to just standard install on your host machine? So the big one would be that you can manage your dependencies, um, your node versions, your yarn, your, your, your anything else that you would typically install on your host. Um, it's all contained with, with the website. So anyone who works on it, um, they're all getting the same versions of everything. And if you're working on multiple sites, you can have different versions, different configurations for each one, and you'll be working with the correct versions of things. Um, so that's the real benefit to that. Lando on Raspberry Pi. Maybe it is possible. I do not know. A Lando recipe for Pantheon Composer and Git. I'm sure someone has figured something out. Uh, I don't have that. Um, Uh, single solar you, to globally use for all of your local sites. Um, I don't know of any examples, but you can expose the ports and everything and, and make it so, yeah, that Lando Start would spin up that, and then you can access, access it from anything else. And Lando does handle, if you if you have other sites in, you know, other Lando sites, Lando handles networking those together, you can actually... Uh, communicate between them if you have multiple Lando sites running at a time. Um, I think it would just be a matter of setting up. You can have multiple services. You just name them, you know, 
number one, number two, number three, and you can have them all running in the same uh, Lando site, if that's what you're asking. Adrian mentions that there are that there is a Pantheon composer Git uh, instructions on um, on the Pantheon site. Uh, doing that with Lando. Um, the, the ones I, the, the, if I'm having performance issues, the, uh, settings I like to set are, um, well, first make sure X debug isn't always on. Like I mentioned that it's a huge hit and, and a lot of people just have it on by default because it sounds like a good idea and they don't realize that from the get go, they've, they've always had terrible performance simply because they've always had X debug on. So check that, make sure that's off. Um, then, um, in your Docker settings, on mine at least, I always up the available memory um, that that it can use. Or if I have enough CPU cores, I'll I'll let uh, Docker use a little bit more CPU cores. We get a little bit of a performance gain. Then it's also worth looking into the uh, uh, Lando's uh, slightly newer um, excludes feature. It was undocumented for the longest time, but it's in there now. Uh, where you can actually tell one of the biggest performance hits for Lando is it trying to s keep uh, data synchronized. I mean, you've got like a composer vendors file that's just, you know, thousands and thousands of files, um, and it's constantly sweeping those for changes. Uh, you end up, you know, you end up using a lot of resources to do that. Um, it slows things down quite a bit. So there's an excludes feature you can look up in the docs uh, for Lando that tells you how to tell it, hey, don't try to monitor and synchronize the vendor's directory. And that, that helps with performance too. Tome output to GitLab output directly to GitHub site hosting possible. Um, output to GitLab. Just GitHub. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, there's GitHub pages. Um, and actually, well, Tome, I believe, the Tome has a, an option where you can go straight to GitHub pages. Um, you don't have to even bother with uh, Git stuff, if I recall correctly, um, if that's what you want to do. Or you can also... Um, also, uh, I believe you can set up GitHub pages to just keep track of a certain directory in your repo. And um, whenever you commit you know, changes to that, the, the, your web page is updated. You can even do that with Lando tooling where you say, uh, you can say uh, Lando publish, and all it does is really git commit, git push. And then do that with one command. All right, uh, anything else? All right, that looks like it's it for the questions. Thanks, everyone, for listening in. Um, I will see if I can figure out if there's a way to make myself available if anyone wants to chat more. Um, I was thinking that maybe this networking option. Um, and uh, thanks for coming. And uh, since you guys can't clap for me, I rigged up this little, little thing here. So I did great, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.